Hello everyone. I'm at the West Tennessee Agriculture Museum in Marlin, Tennessee. And behind me is a log cabin that Governor Gordon Browning was born in. We're gonna go with Brent Cox today to the site where this log cabin originally was. And then we're gonna go to the Gordon Browning Museum in McKenzie, Tennessee. Uh, this is a recreation of Governor Browning's office in Nashville. This is actually his desk. And for that matter, uh, all governors get a painting, and that's one of the two paintings of uh, Governor Brown and while he served in office. Uh, there are many of his law books. Uh, if you look over here, you notice this bookshelf. Uh, those are his books, and they are in the exact order he left them. Uh, some little unique things, but um, this right here being a piece of wood that came from Pearl Harbor, and actually was one of the, the boards that came off a ship at Pearl Harbor that was sunk. And he ended up having those made uh, to use on his bookshelf. You'll find a number of other things, including unit histories. Uh, there's a number of photos, and uh, for that matter, we have probably 10,000 photos. And you can see some right here. Uh, he has several with FDR, and FDR always uh, tends to look a little bit funny. Um, not saying he is on the sauce or anything like that, but it reminds me of it. Of course, uh, this person right here in the middle, um, I'm not gonna get into him, but he was actually a communist leader of a country in South America. And for some reason, the two uh, establish a friendship. Of course, over here, these don't look very well because they ain't in good shape, but you do see um, his grandfather from the Brooks family, and there's his brother. And of course, you see the degrees that he got, which mentions colleges. And sadly, um, my own high school diploma, but you can't see his name on it anymore because someone put it out and signed uh, while it was at Milan and the signature disappeared. But anyhow, this is basically the furniture that uh, you were looking at. That's what he had in his office, except for this couch. This couch actually sat in his house. And if you want to know what I do when people are not in here, I sleep on that couch. <laughs> and it is the most comfortable couch I've ever slept on. Going straight in, you're looking at the McKenzie uh, case right here. And it was asked whenever, uh, we, we've actually paid for this building. We do have problems, we do need donations. But on the other hand, uh, the building's ours. And tell, them, tell them what the building used to be. Used to be the old post office, uh, built in 1935 on the National Historic Registry. And for that matter, uh, there's other things I should have mentioned earlier, uh, but you don't tend to think about the CCC camp that was here in town was named after them. And outside, they have a monument. Of course, this is uh, this one picture, for instance, you're running about 1940s and 50s in downtown. This is actually from the museum steps. We also have a picture I don't have uh, where you can see it right now, but of uh, Truman actually campaigning right out the front door of this building, which is very unique because they had no idea it become Gordon Browning's museum in the future. Um, and you'll also notice uh, that was the personal copy, which is a charcoal print of Governor Alvin Hawkins of Carroll County. He and um, Gordon Browning being the only two governors from here. And below is a lot about the depot uh, and the McKenzie family. And beside it over here, we have uh, Annie Cole Hawkins' uh, book collection, and that's her piece of furniture. Uh, about all I can say is about her, she wrote one of the best diaries of the Civil War that I've ever read. Uh, the other books, uh, there's nothing of note that I found in there, but uh, it does teach you a little bit about the person, and she did write a very good diary of the war. Uh, that's his wife's dress right there that she wore to many of the balls. And of course, there's a picture of him as governor. This is his World War uh, I foot locker, which I always look at it. And I'm like, how on earth did they carry those things around? Really? Uh, have no clue. Uh, I will uh, tell you one little tricky thing that goes on. Uh, here's two of the curators that served before me, Mary Ruth DeVault, which my first historical training was under her, and then my dad, which was a curator up until his death a few years ago, and that's what Governor Bredesen. But there is something up here. Um, somebody worked here, and they used to like to try to go find a way to hunt turkeys. And my dad would always make sure the turkey feathers were in here because he knew the guy would never shoot one. 
And so uh, a World War II veteran that worked here named uh, James Choate would always bring turkey feathers and give them to my dad and they would put them in all kinds of places so that the other uh, person on the staff would have to look at those turkey feathers. <laughs> James was the one shooting them and uh, we did have a very fine uh, time with James here. Uh, you're looking now at a World War I uh, uniform of Governor Brown. He was much smaller in World War I than he was in World War II. In fact, three inches different than that. And he was a little bit old in World War I, so I think a man growing, but you can see the banner of Battery A, which was out of Memphis. He was moved from D to A, D being from this area. And um, if you turn around, you're looking at right now a corduroy uniform of uh, Billy Brown, and that he had made uh, while in France. That is a very unusual uh, uniform that you have right here. Uh, and of course, you can look at the cases on each side. It's all the gear that he had. Um, there's pictures of like the Queen of Belgium and things like that because they honored him in every way. Everywhere he went, he was being honored all the time. And uh, then you can look right here. You can see the ship that uh, he actually took to World War I, which y'all may know um, a lot of people that were going to World War I didn't make it because of the dial of Spanish influenza on the way. But here, all of his medals, one thing you find stuck in there, Bob Taylor, Governor Bob Taylor, uh, cigar box. And that was one of the things I found uh, that was most interesting to me because I happen to like him a lot too. You can see all the medals he had, even medals that he never put on. And as well, if you look here, you'll see in Paris, Tennessee, when his unit, Battery D, actually organized, you can barely see him right there, but that's uh, Gordon. He's about 160 pounds, about five foot nine, man. And above, uh, you'll see some pictures, and I hope you're not seeing any glare, but that happens. You can see Douglas MacArthur, Lane County, Marbles, Bird, Dwight, Eisenhower, uh, FDR. Um, you can see parts of Eisenhower's stuff. You can see letters that are coming from the King of England and things of that nature. Uh, and of course, right here, we have uh, one of the few posters that we found of uh, Gordon Brown and running uh, the first time for governor. And of course, this is a side of like he would have used when he was in uh, uh, the 114th Field Artillery. And it is an artillery McClellan saddle, a uh, saddle that was used throughout many wars. And of course, all the hats, we have everything that you can imagine uh, because Gordon Brown himself and later Ned Raymond Werder as governor are gonna help put a lot into this museum. And of course, uh, World War II uniform over in the corner. If I had it turned around, you can see Eisenhower's pack because he served on Eisenhower's staff for all the time. And over here, you'll see the same thing, except you can't actually see the patch. And this right here was unique to me because we have no idea of him being in uh, South Africa or Italy, but yet he's got bars representing them. So we know that he was over there before they said that he was. And of course, you can't see it very well, but this little area right here is uh, something that was given to him by Acuff Rose um, Publications. So Roy Acuff obviously didn't uh, harbor any bad feelings toward Governor Browning because he was sending things to him. People like Hank uh, Sr and a number of others would visit him from time to time. It seems everybody loved Gordon Brown. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about him uh, from either political party. Um, these are all things he possessed. He was involved in so many things that you can't go through all of it, but uh, his Shriners hat, for that matter, he would obviously have been a Mason. And um, for that matter, a picture over here that's unique uh, in the bottom corner, right below that bottle of wine that was given by his niece. There you see uh, Harry Truman on the front steps of this building uh, campaigning, and you can see Keith Offer, and then you can look down, and there's Gordon Brown on the right. One thing to say, he was always smiling in almost every picture. Below that, you can see when they're carrying him, and uh, he had his, uh, First cousin is one of the pallbearers and when they're burying him. And now we're going to the main part of the museum. Uh, 
uh, we have about everything you can imagine. So there's uh, there's no way we could possibly go through all of this in the time we have. This case, I, I happen to like an awful lot because it's a 1912 case came out of Camden, Tennessee and was in a store. And I decided I would do it in the way I laid it out. It's sort of hard to put in there because we had nowhere to put it. But um, you can see pictures of Brownie and other people that had served in Carroll County. And then up on the walls and over to your right, over to your left, you're gonna see uniforms of so many people because everybody in Carroll and Weekly and some Gibson County people donate things to this museum literally all the time. Uh, the German flag would have obviously been a banner um, that would have hung from a building or from steps or something of that nature, even though they claimed it was a naval flag. Uh, it's made out of blunt and there's no way that thing would have flown on a boat. But anyhow, that is a prize uh, that was brought home. Uh, certain people didn't like the idea of that flag being shown, but uh, the truth of the matter is it was brought home by an American soldier that obviously was one of the winners. Then you see uh, various politicians over on this wall that served. Uh, and there's two that are of the Tennessee General Assembly, which are unique. Uh, one of them because he was responsible for pushing one of the first women to become uh, part of the Tennessee General Assembly. And while Browning is serving as governor, this is in 23 when he helps, but when he's serving as governor, he appoints her Speaker of the House one day. So Marion uh, Scooter Griffin is going to become the first person to actually serve as a female a House Speaker in the state of Tennessee. And uh, you look up, you have another trophy from World War II and other politicians beneath that. I'm not going to get into all their names. Uh, people that I know personally, and for that matter, um, then come in this area where we have a number of uniforms. And for that matter, there's some things that are World War I, World War II, then you have later wars. The one on the end here, um, this is actually given to us by a colonel in the military, but this is actually a Spanish-American uh, war uniform, and that is our oldest, uh, being a member of the first uh, U.S. Cavalry when they went down there. Like I said, this ranges from every war. Um, We'll come through here and I'll give you a little bit of an idea. You're seeing things from specific soldiers that have donated to the library over their time. Uh, this box being highly important because of Dr. Smith, I was great friends with him and everything he had came back here, including every picture and I used to like it. And of course, we used to have more autograph pictures, but somebody came in there with a long coat one day and swapped one. But here's Omar Bradley, which uh, has always been one of my heroes. Of course, up above, you see the Battery D and these two machine guns that were used in World War I. I bet they were a lot of fun to carry. Yeah. And each of these cases are generally in honor of one soldier. Um, we have people that come back and give more and give more and give more. There's gonna be a lot of things left behind and you wonder why the families don't keep them. Of course, the pilot's jacket would probably be one of the higher priced items of the person who's looking into money, but we don't do that. Uh, we don't sell anything. We take about everything. I don't, but uh, each of these cases represent uh, some of the people that were involved, and of course, the Clifford Rust case is one of the most complete World War I uh, cases you're going to see. And his uh, daughter has been donating uh, all of her life and still is. And if you come up the center here, uh, these are all in honor of this World War I, and we're dealing with a World War II. Uh, we have Purple Hearts from various soldiers that have uh, been wounded in wars. And you can go more, and of course you can see the two uniforms and one's World War I, one's World War II. Uh, to my dad and others, the most prized uh, possession they had in their mind, not so much to me, but it is worth mentioning. Uh, these signatures are the people that basically participated in the Holocaust and at the Nuremberg trials. People were collecting signatures, and we do have the largest known collection, and that is Gehring Sigar, 
over here on the right that Governor Browning uh, took from, or Colonel Browning at that time, took from Gary himself. Um, didn't take it, he asked him for it. Same result, he got it. And as we move around, you'll see just a few more cases that are like this. Um, different soldiers, sometimes it's multiple soldiers in each one. Uh, we do have a, an area here, this is mainly dealing with um, the Civil War in Carroll County. It was a very divided county. Um, and there's a few items in here that are priceless uh, because of the fact of uh, early photography, and we do have a very large photography collection. Uh, somewhere around 20,000 images that, ha that would have value. Um, this is an odd one here. It's a World War I soldier that actually did not serve in battle at all, but was a civil officer through the war. And he's from Martin, Tennessee, and left all this. And uh, coming on down, fiddles. I wish we had one of Barksdale's fiddles. He was one of the most famous, but uh, fiddling was a, a major thing, especially in Carroll County. And there are a lot of bands that got together back then. This is all we have left of that fiddle, or some people will call it violin, but um, in Tennessee, that's the cursing. Um, here's a collection of some things that were brought back as trophies, a variety of different uh, bayonets, and of course, from the Third Rock, and things of that nature. And then behind you, these boxes don't really show you an awful lot, but if you look back behind, you will see a table that was also one of Governor Browning's uh, desk. This one we picked up in Maryville, Tennessee, and uh, brought it back here. And that gavel, supposedly, he used uh, in one of the openings of the General Assembly. I don't really know. Uh, for fact, it's one of the things, once the gavel leaves, you don't know, and more and more honoring soldiers. And then we have photo collections. You, it's hard to show that because uh, so many, um, like I said, probably 20,000 plus images, and behind you'll see uh, the red books. I will mention we are the Carroll County Archive. Most of them have it in courthouses. We have everything to 1996 here. So a little bit of everything in the museum, and you sort of span all the way around. People can get overwhelmed by it. A lot of times they don't stay in here that long because they don't really know what they're looking at. Yeah. But it's uh, and a very good collection. Uh, just to mention at the end, genealogy wise, one of the top four genealogy libraries in West Tennessee. Uh, I'm not gonna rank them, but definitely one of them. But uh, we appreciate you coming to the Gordon Browning Museum and uh, much thanks, hope to see you. Thanks for having us. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and feel free to subscribe to the channel as we're going to go in search of more Mid-South Adventures.